The National Transportation Safety Board plans to expand drone operations. The NTSB cataloged hundreds of plane accidents last year and said drones can help crews respond faster to dangerous accident sites. Catherine Gagne is an unmanned aircraft system operator in the Office of Aviation Safety at the NTSB. Kathy, welcome to the program. Thanks for having us. Well, start by telling us about the mission of the NTSB and how you go about your work. Sure. So the National Transportation Safety Board, we are a federal agency charged by Congress for investigating transportation accidents. Uh, we investigate accidents to determine the causes so that we can issue safety recommendations to help prevent future accidents. Uh, Documenting uh, site, accident sites, has always been part of our process, but we've begun integrating the use of drones to do that more efficiently. All right, so explain that. How are drones going to be used at accident sites, and what are the benefits? Well, the benefits that we've seen, um, you know, as I mentioned, we've always done accident site documentation through photography. So back in the day, it was film cameras, and we progressed to digital. With the drones, it gives us the opportunity to position a high-resolution camera in very precisely in space. Now, we knew right away that we would reap benefits on having good site photography and video, but what has come as a big surprise is the ability to develop um, photogrammetric data and orthomosaic maps would actually enable the investigators to perform accident site measurements after they leave the scene. So it increases their efficiency on how much time they actually spend on scene, and it also enables us to enable them to access areas that might not be safe to put personnel there. We can still capture imagery by sending the drone. So is it actually more cost effective? Are you able to get to accident sites faster because of drones? What, what are the specific benefits? Well, a few case examples that might help illustrate that is um, we had an accident in Arizona where a few of us happened to be in town with the drones. And while the investigator was still en route to the scene, we were able to access the accident site, acquire the imagery to develop the um, orthomosaic map and measuring tools, process all that data, have all the basic measurements ready for him, and create all the documentation before he even arrived. So that allowed him to increase his efficiency on scene, spend less time in the desert, and to have the site cleaned up and, and out of the way uh, much faster than we normally would. If we had to take manual measurements, we might be keeping roadways closed longer, airports closed longer. It's really enabled us to increase the speed at which we can conduct site measurements. So you also use drones to replicate the conditions of um, that led to an aircraft accident. Explain how you do that. We've had some very interesting use cases. Uh, there was one case in which we, we had a helicopter that was flying over featureless terrain and ended up crashing in an accident that our investigator suspected might have been controlled flight into terrain. Um, to test his theory, we were able to take the drone, program it with the data for the final moments of the aircraft. We had data for it below 400 feet, fly the drone along that flight path under similar visibility conditions and use the video to see what the pilot might have been seeing at the time of the accident. And there were some very compelling visual illusions and it enables us to show the public how we support our analysis on some of these accidents. And how do you address privacy concerns? Because unfortunately you're dealing with um, aviation accidents. A lot of people can die. How do you protect the privacy of victims? Oh, absolutely. Privacy has always been a concern with the agency. We're, we're wholly transparent. Our dockets are public. Uh, so our privacy rules haven't changed since we've used drones, but we incorporate procedures to ensure that our drones are capturing imagery that doesn't violate privacy type concerns. We, you know, we point the camera away from people. We don't photograph things that aren't relevant to the analysis of the accident. It's all in keeping with our, our privacy policies. You're also working on automating drones, and things can go wrong with drones, especially the automated ones. So how are you balancing that? How are you taking care of the safety of the drones themselves, making sure that they don't fall out of the sky and hurt somebody on the ground? Yeah, sure, that is, a, that is a very valid concern. So drones are technically aircraft, and we are a federal agency, so we operate our drone program, even though our drones are about the size of a clock radio, they're very small, um, we operate them as a federal agency would operate a manned aircraft program. So we have training manuals, standard operating procedures. We take it very seriously with our automated programs. And when the drone is in automated flight, we're monitoring them constantly. Our training um, 
procedures in our currency for our, um, our pilots. We practice all the time, as you would with a manned aircraft, emergency procedures and what to do to pull them out of automation. We never fly over people. We never fly over roadways. Our procedures are pretty robust. And briefly, are you looking to expand this program? We're hoping to. So we've had our drones for several years now. Uh, we need to start phasing them out and bringing in new ones. Where we really need to expand is to have more operators within the agency. We don't have any dedicated drone operators. We are all NTSB employees and investigators who acquire this skill as, as, a, as a tool to help be a technical resource. So um, the, more, the deeper the field that we can have within the agency, the better the ability we would have to respond. Kathy, thank you so much for being on the program. Thank you. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any future Government Matters interviews.